And in the second case study, we are going to focus on deep beams, right? So deep beams are basically um, wall elements that are not resting on the ground, but are being supported by two uh, nodal supports at both ends. So we use these elements either when <laughs> we want our structure to be supported by, by uh, point supports, which are pretty far away, right? So let's say with a distance of more than 10 meters, more or less, or also when we want to support very heavy loads that are not directly coming to our supports, right? So to take very important loads from, from the uh, span center to our supports, that would be the two applications for these um, deep beam elements. In order to analyze these elements, we also need to use the finite element method as we are going to see with Caramba. And just that you know, we are not going to see it, but in case that you would need to define the reinforcement for these elements, a very common approach is to use the strut and time model, which basically means that you define an ideal uh, truss model, which replaces our wall element so that you should define your reinforcement along the tension members, right? These uh, members that are in blue color here in this picture. Okay, and these um, deep beams, the reason for analyzing them as surface elements, one of the reasons at least, is that uh, the, the geometry is different from that of simple beams. So I'm not going to go very deep into it, but the stress uh, the stresses of these uh, deep beams are not the same or are not as simple as the ones of uh, slender or simple beams. So that's the reason for analyzing them as surface elements, right? So let's get into Caramba to take a proper look into it. Okay, so now we are back and we need to do two things. First, we need to disable the first uh, grasshopper definition. So we select everything, we right click and select disable. And we need to do the same with the Rhino model. So we are going to deselect all the geometry elements of our first case study, like that. And we are going to activate the second case study. So there we go, there we go, and there we go. Okay, so the only geometry object that we have in Rhino is this column, and now we have to activate our grasshopper definition. So we select the second case study, we right click into the canvas, and we select enable. Right, there we go. So we see that we are generating our structure from this column here, and this is our deep beam, right? So you can see that it is spanning um, between these two supports, which are pretty far away, and also it is taking an important line load that it is going to be uh, introduced into these supports. We are going to see how right now. But before jumping into it, just take a look into the formation and we have these parameters to play with. We can play with the span width between along our supports and we can see how we can reach, uh, for instance, uh, 20 meters length if we wanted to with this deep peep element. And I have specified a height of 3.5 meters which is uh, a very usual value for the floor height, right? Because in building structures, these deep beams take place along the whole story height, right? Or even in some cases, um, throughout several stories, right? So that's the reason for this height value. And we are going to later on see these two parameters, two other parameters, but take a look into the grasshopper definition. So this is pretty similar. Here we are defining an important um, point load of uh, 5,000 kilonewtons, but everything else is pretty normal, right? Regarding the analysis of results, we have our model view and uh, self components here, as uh, we already saw before several times, and also showing the utilization values. And we have also this new component, right? Land result on cells. So in order for um, in order to use it, we have to provide our calculated model and a list of points. So let's activate these preview components, right? So we can activate them. And we also need to come here and we need to hide our <laughs> cross section. So we can, for instance, deselect utilization, that's right. And now we can see how this component is doing. So this component, it is playing the principal express lines, right? And we are displaying now all the lines, the lines that go through this point list. So that's the reason for providing a point list here. And basically, 
This is very similar as what we're seeing in our, in our theory. In this case, we have our compression lines in blue color and our uh, tension lines in red. And we can use this stress distribution to basically define our stress and time model if you want it, right? This is a normal case of a deep beam, but also with this grasshopper definition, what you can do is to define an opening. So if we set if we set this parameter to one, we can see <laughs> that we have an opening here, right? So now we have to uh, evaluate what influence does this opening have. So we can see that, of course, the uh, stress lines change with, when we change the, the position of the opening. And here we can see that this is a pretty critical location under the, under the load. So we can see how, how the stress lines change here, right? We have an important um tension forces here or even here above the opening and basically we should know that this is a critical um, position not just for the stretch lines but if we activate activate the utilization in our cell view component we can see that we are pretty high but again the the closer we get to our load let's try to put it here right this is this is pretty but for, for our uh, deep beam system, in this case, we can see how our values, how we are not even over 100% yet, but I tell you that this is pretty bad. Yeah, that's right, there we go. And yeah, you, you can see that we are above a 100% utilization, right? So basically, in case that you have openings, it is okay, right? Because for these uh, deep beams, you usually need some, some doors and windows and so on and so forth but just take into account that we cannot um, allocate them either <laughs> under the, this uh, very heavy point loads, right? So this might be a column that is coming from the upper stories, or we can also not put this opening right above our supports, right? Right above, above our column. So, so basically to sum up, this was a deep beam system and we use these elements in order to solve very long span width and also when we need to take very heavy loads that are not directly coming into a column support.